Hey, what's going on, parents? Happy Teenager Tuesday. Uh, we are on part five, the la very last part of uh, the series that we're doing with Rhett Smith on depression and anxiety. Rhett, ready to say like everything? I my breathing. Yeah, yeah. I, that's very good. I have uh, made my bed today. I didn't. As I was it, saying earlier, I'm having such a good time laughing, talking about a serious <laughs> issue, because it is yeah. a serious issue, but I'm yeah. glad just to spend time with you. Yeah, but dude, again, thank you so much for coming. Seriously. Yeah. And um, uh, like we've said, I, I think you said this a few weeks ago, we're, we're not able to dive six feet deep yeah. in every part of this topic. Um, but man, thank you for the wisdom uh, and the bullet points and the starting points that you've already given to many, many parents out here who have yeah, been just, asking for this. We can't do it justice. So I yeah. want parents to always feel free to reach out, obviously, to you and your team or, you know, just to email me or contact me if you have questions. And we'll try to yeah. provide as many resources as possible. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. And <laughs> so uh, to end it, though, we're going to we are going to give every everything that we got left. <laughs> no, um, the I, I think it would be good to kind of lean in on one area where parents from time to time are, you know, inquisitive about on my kid has anxiety meeting new people. My kid is nervous about coming yeah. when, you know, either come to church in person or in a number of different areas. And, and so where, where's a good understanding of when to push and when not to push of like, no, it's good to go out and work on this, you know, or, or to go, go out and experience this or, but we also don't want to do that too much and put them to yeah. a breaking point. And I think we said it like a few weeks ago, like this is where parents are the best experts and they have to discern. There's probably a, a, an ongoing push and pull that they have to like navigate and kind of figure out, you know, because I think there are times where it's helpful to give a nudge because sometimes there's a fear that drives your anxiety. You know, for me, it was my anxiety was driven because I used to like um, stutter a lot. And so hmm. for me as an adult, just getting on stage and practicing and falling on my face and not succeeding, but getting better and better and gaining confidence was yeah. really critical hmm. to me, you know, really managing my anxiety. And for some kids, it's like giving them a nudge maybe to try something new that they're anxious about or maybe anxious to come to church in a social setting. And so trying to figure out, I don't want them to hate church by pushing yeah. them, but yeah. I also don't want to leave them isolated and alone. So I think just kind of not being afraid to kind of navigate, push and pull, ask your kids questions, mm. you know, enter the dialogue because you can get a sense by what they're saying. Yeah. Um, this is where pulling in a third party, and by that I mean like asking questions of the volunteers and the leaders who see your kids, who yeah. maybe have a different perspective, maybe trying to encourage them to get into counseling so you get a different mm. perspective. Because mm -hmm. sometimes as parents, we're just, we're so in it that we can't see maybe the full picture and we don't really yeah. know what's going on. And, you know, to be honest, um, I think my biggest growth in life, even though I had really great, great parents, is, is a, like a, a college leader, a youth leader coming alongside. And they said the very same thing that my parents were saying. Yeah. But I just heard it differently. Yeah. So we don't always hear our parents very well. Yeah. So I think creating a community, putting your kids in a community where there's other voices giving input, and you're, put, you're, you're going to them also and saying, hey, help me understand what you're seeing in my kids. Can yeah. I push a little more or should I back off? I love that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and, um, and something that we try to do too, if we know that someone is coming for the first time or if we know they're coming back for the first time in a long time, yeah. then we prep. We, we yeah. prep on the back end. Like we, we talk with that small group leader. We talk to that small group leader of, of trying to get a, an easy to get along with student in that yeah. small group to kind of help break the ice. Hey, sit with us. These people are waiting near like the first time guest check in or check in. Um, we, we try, man, if we can, we're going to go out of our way for that one. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have a saying with our, our volunteers, we break out every single week yelling for the one, yeah. you know? Um, so if, if, you know, if you're out there and, and your student is one of those ones, we would love to help you win on the back end um, and just reaching out to us, letting us know. Or, yeah. or maybe if there is something like this going on and you're like, I, I, I don't even know who my, my kid's small group leader is, we can help connect you. Like if you reach out to us, then we'll connect you that day with uh, yeah. uh, that small group. I did that as a college pastor when I was uh, in, in Los Angeles. A parent would mm -hmm. call me about a kid in college trying to get involved in youth group, and I would contact all my leaders who are you know college kids and say, hey, can you reach out to this or go by their dorm? And yeah. So I think you know, you, this is a really great community that wants to help, mm -hmm. and you know, I kind of have like a math formula in my head, which mm -hmm. is. Um, 
I, I want to take all the insight as a parent that I've kind of gathered about maybe what are the underlying roots of my kids' anxiety and depression and stuff. I have that insight. But insight alone doesn't necessarily change us, right? Mm -hmm. we got to put it into practice in some way. Hmm. And so I want to try to figure out as a way to, to help my, understand my kid or my student and take that knowledge and then set up some practices or experiments they can try so they can get that transformation. Oh, that's good. You know, yeah. so for like, let's give an example as a leader. You know your kid who's kind of anxious and he's struggling with feeling like inadequate. And you know, like, if you can get him on stage and maybe share his testimony, that might be a really big breakthrough, mm, right? Yeah. But you're not going to just throw him on stage. You're going to probably walk alongside and help understand what's going on. Yeah. And you're going to help him understand that insight. And then you're going to slowly set up ways to help him put that, that overcoming that fear into practice. Yeah. That ultimately one day he might or she might get on stage and, and share their testimony. I mean, it's it's a journey, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's insight plus let's practice some things. And I think you get the change and the transformation mm -hmm. of anxiety and depression that yeah. we want to see. Man, so much of this in this conversation, in the, these conversations, yeah. has been about having conversations and then as the parent or leader, whoever, analyzing those. Like yeah. not not like crazy, but but just being Almost yeah, not aware. with a notepad. Like they're like, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big yellow one. And yeah, like, mm. but here's the thing. Yeah. I think when we just put it out on the table, and we talk about what we're feeling, we talk about the anxiety, and depression. Yeah, um, it's explicit now. Yeah, and it's open, and we're less likely to fall into those patterns. Hmm. You know, if I'm talking to you about how anxious I'm getting, I'm less likely just to fall into this like spiral of anxiety because yeah. now I'm sharing it with you. Yeah, and so just opening up conversations in a vulnerable way, I think. And another key we've noticed in the five conversations is just being patient. Yeah. It's not a quick fix. Yeah. Yeah, which is true, which is frustrating. <laughs> it is frustrating. True. Yeah. So uh, what about this? With When you're having a conversation with your student who's depressed, anxious, when do you know, man, this is a red flag for either not pushing them or, mm. man, I, I've been leading this as a parent at home. I've tried to get, like, hey, nudge them towards counseling, but, man, this is a red flag. I need to get them to a counselor, some a professional pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, I think even if you have that dialogue in your head, like, this seems, okay. this seems like a big deal. Yeah. Like, it probably is then. Okay. And you probably want to get third eyes on it. And that could be a pastoral counselor. It could be a youth leader. Mm. It could be some volunteers. It could be something like getting into counseling. Yeah. You know, and then I think if there's any ever question in your mind, gut, that your kid is in danger, right? Um, don't hesitate to reach out for help hmm. immediately. Okay. If that's calling 911 or, you know, um, coming alongside them to get them out of a situation, I just, you know, as a parent, I don't want to hesitate and have d regrets that I waited and didn't jump on something. Yeah. And so I think if you just have any big concerns, like don't hesitate to get your kids, if there's safety involved. Yeah. And if it's not like a life, death, safety issue, but you know something's up, don't wait to get them help five months from now when you could do it today. Yeah, that's good. I'm kind of putting you on a spot with this yeah. to kind of end it. But I like to be in the spot. Uh, this, yeah, I'll make you anxious. I'm going <laughs> to practice my breathing here. Yeah, um, I, I'd love to kind of, to kind of end, end today and end this series. Would you take, you know, 30, 40 seconds or so, something, a minute, whatever, yeah. and maybe talk directly to a parent who's, navigating this but feels so inadequate to do it and feels like may or maybe even has the thought i can't do this yeah yeah i mean i think i would just say to that parent immediately like just know that you're not alone mm. like every parent that i know has struggled with this issue yeah. whether you know it or not you're not alone um i think i would tell that parent i want i want you to know that you're not alone but you're also equipped you have it within you to um navigate these issues with your kids you have it within you to be open and to be vulnerable and to model these things. Um, you have it within you to be a good listener and to be patient, right? And to engage this conversation and not walk away from it. And I think if you do all those things, you'll set yourselves up for success to know, hey, we can handle this within our household. Or, you know what, I need to like reach out and get someone like Will or the Hope staff or a counselor yeah. involved in the process. But just know that you're not alone yeah. and nothing's wrong with you if you're struggling with this and that yeah. you. If you need help, don't hesitate to get help with it. Yeah, and I love that. 
uh, kind of how we sign off every All right, week. Man. Um, it's been good. It, it has been good. Rhett, thank you so much for, for being with us and, and for speaking wisdom and give us, giving us both perspective and practical. And uh, parents, like you said, you're not alone. You're not alone. And you can do this. We are with you. If you need help, reach out to us. Please, please, please reach out to us because God's with you and so are we. Have a great week. Thank you.